Baby Darling is another film this year for me that came out of nowhere. I didn't know anything about this, and all of a sudden, a couple weeks ago, everybody's posting about it online saying, oh, you need to go see this. It premiered at festivals. It's one of the best horror films of 2024. Check this out. I looked at my theater and theaters locally, and it looked like it wasn't coming anywhere near me. Then all of a sudden, the other day, I look, and bam, there it is. So I got my tickets. I saw it last night. But did Strange Darling deliver, or is it another one in the long line of disappointing 2024 horror films? Strange Darling stars Willa Fitzgerald and Kyle Gallner, and this one I recommend. If you are interested in going to see it and you've not seen it yet, go in blind, as blind as possible. That was the advice given to me, and I believe it will lead to your best viewing experience. Because of that, there will be no spoilers up until the point that I make sure to tell you that there will be spoilers. From here on out, you are safe. But I recommend as blind as possible before you go see this. Let's start things off with the positives, the things that I did really enjoy about Strange Darling. And the first is the performances from both Willa Fitzgerald and Kyle Gallner. And I am not typically a big Kyle Gallner fan. I want to like Kyle Gallner. It's not that I don't like him. I just don't think he's the best actor. He's kind of one note for me most of the time. He does a lot of really, really dramatic acting and a lot of the nose touching and the thinking and stuff he does that kind of stuff a lot in like every role and it's again i like him okay i just don't think he's the best i typically when i see him i see kyle gallner i don't see a character but i think he absolutely outdoes his, he does himself in this film and strange darling in particular has a very unique performance because it's multi-layered and the way the film was broken up he has to play sort of different pieces, different parts at different times. So I'll go in more into that in just a second, but also Willa Fitzgerald, fantastic in this. This performance from Willa Fitzgerald is to me what people thought they were getting in Pearl from Mia Goth. However, this is actually great. There's a lot of very interesting camera work in here that really just holds on Willa Fitzgerald's character for a long time, really extended one take shots, and she has to do a lot in quite a few of these scenes and really carry them similar to Kyle Gallner. As I said, the way the film was broken up, she also has to be different in different times. Now, I want to elaborate on that more, but I honestly want to give as little away as possible. So I'll just say that the film is broken up into six chapters and it plays with a narrative structure. That's all I'm going to say about that, just because I think the simple fact of going in and the way they do things already on its own was a surprise to me. And so I want to try to save that for you as well. That being said, I really enjoyed how they broke up this film. It worked really well in telling a story that's somewhat different, but very specifically throwing you off guard with how they tell the story and doing a lot of different things to kind of trick the audience in a very intelligent way, not like a fooling you, pulling the wool over your eyes type of way. And then unveiling some sort of truth or explaining things later on. The music in Strange Darling is very, very interesting. Part of the score is very intentional and serves a very specific purpose, which I will talk about when I get to my spoilers. And then part of the music choices are also very intentional, trying to hit sort of emotional beats. I personally was not a huge fan of the music choices in certain parts. However, I did like the score for the film and how it was used. It's very over the top. <clears throat> excuse me, very over the top, very loud, very loud. At least it was in my theater and very on the nose. And again, getting to my spoilers, I'll say more about that. But the film does a really good job at being like, this is supposed to mean something. And then later on in the film, you kind of find out why? Strange Darling is, is shot in a very interesting way. I'm going to compare it to a movie real quick that I don't want to give some false comparisons to, but I had read somewhere someone said this was like in a violent nature meets some other movie. And I was like, oh, please, no. But there's something about this movie and the way that certain shots are that do remind me of in a violent nature. Now, I don't want that to mean that make you think there's anything like that movie. It's not at all. This is a far better film. They're not the same movie, but there's something about specific shots that feel very raw. There's certain shots that feel almost like phone quality footage. Now, obviously, I mean that in the best way. I don't mean like it looks terrible. It's just there's certain shots that feel 
very uniquely like someone just picked up something and started filming and in a violent nature has that feel to it very like sort of unpolished and very like tracking shots long tracking shots and there's some of those in here that have that feel it's a very interesting feel and it's not throughout the entire film well i wasn't necessarily a fan of some of or, or i guess a lot of those shots i do think most of the film is shot very well and the way that it is shot really adds to the storytelling elements specifically again there's certain scenes that the way they're shot really make it better when they cut back and forth between characters and i think really add to the mystery and the intimacy between the actors. I'm happy to say that Strange Darling shot all the way up to number three uh, for my favorite films of 2024. Now that could change. This is kind of like gut reaction on my letterbox rating or uh, ranking, but that I, at the moment it's number three and I'm happy to say that I was very, very pleasantly surprised by Strange Darling. I really enjoyed my theater experience. This is one of those I could see not necessarily landing with everybody, but I think for the most part, if you understand that this is going to be a little bit of an interesting movie told in some different ways, I think you're going to have a really, really good time. My opinion, Strange Darling does exactly what a horror film in 2024 should do. It does something a little bit familiar, but turns it on its head and does something very unique with it creating a very fun and engaging watch and keeps you kind of guessing throughout the entire film. So you're not bored, but it's also not trying to play tricks on you or pretend something is going on that's not going on. Things explain themselves. Things make sense once everything is unfolded. And again, you know, it's, there's so many movies that are just like throwing random crap at the wall to try to throw you off guard. And you could do that and maybe that works for somebody when you get to the end and nothing really mattered or it didn't really tie in together. Strange Darling is not like that. It really keeps you guessing but also is impactful. Each scene means something. Each line of dialogue, each look, each piece of music is very intentional, very set up to come together in the end and create a cohesive storyline that will not only satisfy you in the moment but satisfy you when you reflect upon the entirety of what you just watched all right real quickly i want to talk about a few negatives i had with the film then i'll get into spoiler talk there aren't many although i will say pretty much every other actor in this film besides our two leads is not very good especially a lot of the side characters that are just people at a gas station or like at a restaurant etc those type of people who may have lines of dialogue or people that interact with them with our main characters for brief moments pretty much all suck for some reason and that's where they it kind of feels like in a violent nature also it's like every character really feels like i don't know how to ex explain it the best but they feel so fake and just so like like a prop they just feel like a prop like your characters are going in the story and there's this prop actor and it just really comes off as this very awkward, awkward moment, awkward acting. And like I had mentioned, there are some moments in here that are shot in a very unique way so that they feel almost like iPhone footage. There is one part in particular that when they're cutting back and forth between two, two people talking, one shot is more out of focus, more uh, looks worse quality for some reason. And the other shot does not. And I don't know why it must have been budgetary constraint, constraints or something like that, some sort of issue. And there's a couple other shots where there are just moments where it feels like someone's holding a phone and it's just kind of like kind of shaky and it just feels like it works okay in the scene. It just kind of takes you out of it because it feels very unnatural. Like it feels very, or I guess natural, however you want to describe it. Very like odd. It doesn't feel cinematic is the best word I would use to describe it. And again, the whole film is not like that, but there's certain glaring shots and moments that kind of stand out and pull you out of the film a little bit. As I said, alongside some pretty bad acting from a lot of the side characters. My last negatives are, as I kind of touched on a moment earlier, some of the music choices in here that are supposed to really hit these emotional beats didn't really work for me. There's certain songs that are very... Very specific, very chosen, as I said, four moments. And 
they just kind of were distracting to me. There's a very specific key point in the film where you're supposed to be paying attention to Willa Fitzgerald's performance, and the song is really distracting more than it is helping, in my opinion. That being said, also, there are moments that I think going a little too long. There's a little bit of meandering here and there. It's especially noticeable just because of the structure of the film and the way you're kind of waiting for something else to happen. And there are moments where it felt a bit self-indulgent to me. And that's where I really get the comparison to Pearl also and Mia Goth's performance. As I said, this is a much better performance. I think it works much better as a whole. However, it does feel a little bit self-indulgent-y to me where they just kind of maybe should have cut but they didn't want to and it just goes on and on and on and on and there's a few moments like that here where you, you're kind of like okay just cut it's doing more harm than it is good at this point however on that note i just want to add that while that there is a moment at the very end of the film where that happens i if you see it i think the performance there is solid there are specific points in that performance at the very end that really work very well, very raw, very unnerving. And as I said, you know, just I feel like the music choice is distracting. I feel like there maybe could have cut a little bit here and there or maybe just cut a little earlier or something. But for the most part, I do think that that ending does work really well. One more negative on that note, it, I just because I just remembered it, the beginning of the film also is feels very self-indulgent -y to me. And when you watch it, it just, it's like there's like three openings. There's kind of like multiple endings also. And it's kind of like artistic opening, artistic opening. And then it's like text quotes and then like a chapter thing and then artistic opening. And it's like, okay, you really wanted, you liked what you were doing there. It feels like they couldn't pick one. So they just kind of threw all of them in there. And while I actually think they work okay, I couldn't help but, think while I was watching it, this feels a little bit like, all right, I, I'm going to do everything because I can't pick one thing. All right, now I'm going to talk about spoilers. I'm not going to go into too much more detail, but this is your warning. If you have not seen Stranger Darling, go check it out. From here on out, I will be talking about spoilers. First off, let's talk about the narrative structure of this film, how it plays in six chapters, but they decided to break up the way that they tell those chapters. Genius. I thought that was so cool, even from the get-go, where it says this film will be told in six chapters, but then it goes straight to chapter three or whatever. I was like, what? Oh, okay. And I, as I said, going in, I didn't know that. I love the role reversal here of us thinking Kyle Gallner's character is the killer. And then I will say that I did predict it a little bit pretty early on that they were going to flip it. And I think maybe probably a few people could probably predict that. It's not like it's so clever that you might not think, oh, they're probably reversed, but it keeps kind of playing with your mind, thinking, yeah, are they? Are they not? Who's who? Are they both bad? Are they both good? What's going on? So I really love the role reversal here, but also there wasn't done as some just one big reveal. The story structure here, the storytelling is so good and so unique, and there's so many different elements that work so well, right down to the characters' names, when it opens up and it says Willa Fitzgerald as the lady and then Kyle Gallner as the devil, immediately you're thinking this just reinforces our idea that he is the bad guy. He's named the devil in the film. He's got to be this famous serial killer, right? Then you've got this music that plays every single time Kyle Gallner's on film, on shows up on screen. Every time it's like he comes in the corner, it's like... Rrr, rrr, rrr comes on the tree every single time. And at first, I mean, it sounds cool. I actually thought it worked. But then for a second, I was like, okay, are they going to do that every single time he shows on screen? And then the more they did it, the more I was like, I bet that's supposed to be doing something here. And it was, it's supposed to be throwing us off guard so much so that we get this idea just reinforced in our brain that not only is Kyle Gallner snorting cocaine, chasing a woman with his truck, shooting at her, but he's also named the devil. And every time he's on screen, the music is saying, this guy's bad, this guy's bad. So much so that there's 
There's no way that we can't think he's got to be the bad guy. I, I loved the story structure there, the way they tried to do that. And again, they're not trying to trick you. They're trying to just reinforce an idea that's already in your head. And that's what's so genius about it. They never really said he was bad or said he was good. They're just showing a story out of sequence. And we're left to think in our brain, we piece it together, he's bad. When he's snorting cocaine and he's smoking cigarettes and he's chasing the woman with his truck, you're going to think, okay, that's a little bit on the nose, but all right, I guess he's a bad guy. He's a serial killer. He likes to snort cocaine. I was like, okay, that's a little bit hammy for me, but whatever. Then when you realize, at, you get to the point that he's snorting the cocaine to counteract the ketamine that he had snorted from her, just absolute brilliant storytelling. And they didn't need to like say it. They didn't need to like say this will counteract the drugs. It works perfectly. They don't need to reshow that scene where he's in the truck snorting it again. It all comes together. And as soon as I saw it, I'm like, oh, it's not because he's a serial killer. It's because he is counteracting the drugs. Genius. And then towards the end of the film, the very end, when you get Willa Fitzgerald's character saying she doesn't see people, she sees devils. It's like, bam! That's why he's called the devil. So good. That is good screenwriting right there. There is just so much of that in this movie. There's so much plant and payoff and so many unique ideas and things that they throw at us to try to just, again, not trick us, but like reinforce this idea that we already have in our minds. And speaking of that, they do, of course, play on stereotypes in this film. And I can see how... This film kind of tries to tiptoe through that a little bit. I can see how some people could watch this and think that it might be a little misogynistic with the way it plays in some parts. I can see that complaint. I think that's, that is a big influence on why the end of the film, it's a woman who shoots her and not a man, not a cop, or not somebody else, because I feel like it would have just doubled down a little too much on the masculine sort of revengeness of this with the cop complaining about the one, the police officer who's obviously wrong and kind of being stupid, as well as Kyle Gallner's reversal of the male masculinity trope and the fact that we think he's a serial killer and he's not. She's a serial killer. I like that they played with those tropes, but I could see how they were trying to be kind of careful and not lean too much into that to then make people upset. Of course, this is based off a true story, right? Which I have no idea who this serial killer is, but she's a real woman, right? Who apparently went on a rampage and killed, killed a bunch of people. Or that could actually just all be BS and it's not based off a true story. That could just be like, you know, Fargo making up some things that we think that. I don't know. I haven't looked into it at all. If you know, let me know down in the comments if it is really based off something real or if they just made that up for the movie. Overall, Strange Darling was such a good surprise for me. I really enjoyed my theater experience and I just took me on a wild ride, but also it's left me thinking about it for, you know, the next day or so. It's still in my mind. I'm still thinking about ideas and a lot of the execution and storytelling in the film that I think are just top notch. As I said, there are some moments that don't work entirely for me, but you know, for the most part, like I said, it's number three on my best films of 2024 list. For me personally, it just brought so much to the table and was so engaging and entertaining in such a way that I haven't seen this year in 2024. Thank you for watching and let me know what you thought of Strange Darling down below in the comments and take care. I'm money scared, I'm a big bad wolf. Oh, I never see the silver line and only see the gold. I don't speak in caps, dog, everything bold. And I put that on myself cause it's a life that I done chose. I said come through, you can see me on the west side.